We're home. Oh, sup, you guys. Wait, Spooky, you went outside? I have a job, and unlike yours, it's real. Jesus, who pissed in your coffee? My customers. It's all right, though. I marked their souls for my midnight feeding. Your what? Phoebe, didn't you have a question for my stupid roommate? Oh, what's up, baby bot? Ms. Butters, could we do a happy movie? Perhaps. What the f*** is a happy? It sounds disgusting. Oh, well, I know this one. It's when your face does this. Well, do you have anything in mind? When we were with the scary lady, I saw a movie on the shelf and got it. It looked nicer than Monster House. Oh, hell yeah. This is one of my favorite movies. How long is that list? As long as my dick. Oh, good. So it's small. Hey. Well, if it's one of your favorites, do you mind if we watch it together? Not at all, baby bot. Let's do it. The movie is really cute looking. When did it come out? Well, it's The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, came out in 1966, around the real good age of animation. Not to discredit animation nowadays with stuff like Invincible, but it was a simpler time to say the least, and I personally like it. It was much more modest. It's better than Monster House's animation at least. That we can agree on. It's so pretty. I can't say the same about you. I'm prettier than you. Really? Says who? I'm not touching that with a ten-foot pole. We start out with a decent, warm, mood-setting scene. The pleasant Peanuts music, the beautifully drawn and painted fall backgrounds. It's just all around gorgeous. It's one of those movies you can sit down and watch while bundled up in your bed, with a big smile on your face as you feel your heart just warm up happily. Then Linus picks up a dirty apple off the ground and eats it like the dirty little bastard he is. He tosses it into the garbage after literally one bite, and they walk into the pumpkin patch, which is conveniently a 30-second walk from their house. Linus keeps showing pumpkins to Lucy, but she denies each one of them until he displays the Chungus Pumpkin. Wait, where's Wendy? I don't know. Oh crap, that's not good! God damn it, Spooks, can you- On it. Wait, did she just- Ah, there we go. Linus and Lucy plop the pumpkin down in the living room, and after Lucy brutalizes it, Linus cries out and runs away, unaware she was prepared to commit a homicide in front of him. How could she kill the pumpkin? It was already dead! After a memorable intro that serves as a metaphor for how children block out trauma... Wait, is that true? I don't know, maybe? We then come back to start the actual plot, as those first two scenes were skits or... Something? I'm not sure, but they establish a fun mood. Snoopy blows a leaf onto Charlie Brown's pile, and Linus then displays his nervous tick where he ruins everything. What the fuck? Jumping into leaves looks like fun. IJ and I were just hiding the leaves back at the farm, and, uh, wait. No, do go on. I wish to hear every detail of your incestuous stories. Re really? No. Lucy then baits Charlie Brown into committing suicide with the promise of a legal document and a football. It's really not that hard to make people kill themselves. But it's even easier to just kill them. We then see Linus writing to the one, the only, Great Pumpkin. To the Great Pumpkin? Oh, he sounds so nice. He's not real, Phoebe. Do you believe in him, Butters? I have two Great Pumpkins on my chest. Wow! But I only see one pumpkin. Linus proceeds to then get bullied by everybody for being a stupid f***ing idiot and believing stupid f***ing things, which ends with Sally hitting on him and Charlie Brown dragging her away. Linus then seals the envelope and heads outside to mail it. Lucy trails him and makes fun of him for being a midget, and Linus dunks on her. Happy feet! Wombo combo! That ain't Falco! That ain't Falco! Oh! 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 Did he... did he just sauce on that gal? He did. They start young now, I see. Charlie Brown excitedly runs over to Lucy and tells her he got invited to his first ever Halloween party. Then Lucy proceeds to crush his dreams and say he must have been invited by mistake because apparently no one likes Charlie Brown. Well, that's just cruel. Would you invite him to a party? <laughs> Hell no. The kids get ready for their annual Halloween Ku Klux meeting and invite Sally along. Are you 100% positive that's what's going on? Of 
Of course, why wouldn't it be? No reason. Charlie Brown f***s up his sheet somehow and then rolls in Pigpen, the poor kid covered in dirt because he never bathes. After Snoopy strolls in with his f***ing drip, he dips, marching off to probably get laid, and the rest of them go to the pumpkin patch. They still try to get Linus's dumbass to come with them, but he still refuses, asking if they want to sing pumpkin carols. What the f*** is a pumpkin carol? I assume it's like a Christmas carol, but worse? I found one. I will murder you and send you to mom in a shoebox. Sally being stupid, and white, and blonde, and a girl, she stays with Linus to wait for the Great Pumpkin, immediately after saying she wasn't stupid. Not a far-off description from you. But I'm not blonde. That's why I said it wasn't far-off, dumbass. But I'm... I'm not blonde. Oh my god. The rest of the gang go trick-or-treating, and Charlie Brown gets stoned at literally every single house they go to for making a costume that looks like he was attacked by Michael Jackson in a bush. Though during this time, Lucy shows just how truly good of a sister she is. Even though she bullies Linus, she's still asking the houses if she can have extra candy for her little brother. Why don't you do that for me, Lubot? Because I literally don't like you. Oh. You know, trick-or-treating is an interesting topic in Equestria. Why? It's... Very political. How do you mean? Well, like, Earth Ponies would dress up as, like, a Wonderbolt or something, and then a Pegasi would get all uppity about it because the fake wings, right? So they'd call it Pegaface, and same thing with unicorns about their horns, but no one cares when the Pegasi and the unicorns do the exact same thing to dress up as an alicorn, nor do they care when any of them dress up as, like, a buffalo or a griffin. Did, did you just provide socio-political commentary on Halloween? Butters, you know goddamn well I don't know what that means. Violet asks where Snoopy is, and Charlie Brown explains how every Halloween Snoopy reenacts his time in the war through PTSD-riddled panic attacks on top of his doghouse. Hey, this is just like Thanksgiving at my grandponies. Except I don't have a bullet wound and my mom ain't yelling. Spritzy, stop talking. What? Grandpaps wasn't always a great shot in the war to begin with. No wonder he couldn't hit me in the face. Spritz. Then again, Mama did kick him in the balls. I think I even heard his catheter pop out. Spritzy! What? The group goes back to bully Linus again. Sally defends him, but then immediately threatens him with consequences if the Great Pumpkin doesn't show up. At Violet's party, Lucy and Violet show us the proper use for bald people by abusing Charlie Brown once again with a Sharpie. We see Snoopy continue to enact his PTSD by stumbling across the countryside for a few hours until he ends up arriving at the big house with the party. Lucy shows us how to bob for apples with her literal big mouth and ends up doing the Whitney, Wisconsin. Whitney, Wisconsin. Hi. I don't know, Phoebe. I stopped googling things she said because they're always gross. Schroeder plays some marching music for Snoopy, but the moment the tone shifts even slightly, Snoopy begins to have another panic attack. Out of fear for his life, Schroeder returns to having music, then immediately returns to somber music because he finds the veteran crying to be amusing. Well, that's just heartless. Schroeder rejects Lucy constantly, so that could explain his pleasure in watching others suffer. I love watching people named Lucy suffer. You like watching anybody suffer? Affirmative. Snoopy runs off to the pumpkin patch and begins to rise up from the shrubbery. Linus loses his f***ing mind, thinking it's the Great Pumpkin, and he literally blacks out. When it comes to, Sally then chews him out for being dumb as a sack of bricks. WHAT THE FUCK DID YOU DO TO ME HOLY FUCKING <laughs> Linus explains how Sally's fury over being cheated out of Halloween candy is more terrifying than anything he's ever experienced. I'd say that's a decent assumption, Linus. Then this little moron thinks saying if the Great Pumpkin comes, will magically make him not come. Even though he was never coming. Let the kid drain. Since when do you care about how kids feel, Lubot? I don't. It's funny to watch their expectations shatter. You're literally the definition of evil. That would be me. <laughs> Linus and Charlie Brown then discuss their Halloween experience, and after calling Linus dumb, Charlie Brown listens to Linus scream about how the Great Pumpkin will totally, definitely be there next year. Is that the end? Yep, that's the legendary Great Pumpkin Halloween special. I liked it. I'm glad. It is a happier movie, a much lighter toned one you can just throw in every Halloween to get some relaxation. This is a special I've always enjoyed, ever since I was a Little Butters. I continue to enjoy it as a Big Butters. It is nearly a flawless piece of 60s animation. It's innocent, it's pure, and it's wholehearted fun. And you reviewed it on a show where you and your roommates constantly swear at each other. Mm, yes, of course. Genius. Don't encourage her, you stupid equine. How about you, Luba? Did you like it? Well, I saw a child's dream shatter before his eyes, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It wasn't scary enough for me. Where's the scene of Linus getting eaten by the Great Pumpkin because it's actually an abomination that feeds off children on Halloween? That, that, that doesn't happen. It does not, it